Okay, welcome everyone. Um, so today we're looking at modern JavaScript. So this is a, a meetup, free meetup by Kadiri. So what do we mean by modern JavaScript? Well, if you can see the screen, um, it just shows all the, thank you, it just shows all the version numbers of JavaScript there. So as you can see, the first uh, the language was released in 1997. And that went under the name, the edition was ES1, so ECMAScript 1, ECMAScript version 1. We okay with So, um, one of the key revisions to the language was in 2015. Um, as you can see, that has the, uh, the name ES6 or ES2015. You might have heard these terms thrown around quite a bit um, if you're familiar with JavaScript. So since 2015, which we're basically calling modern JavaScript since then, um, there are yearly releases typically coming out in June every year. So there is a new release coming out in June this year, June 2019, um, and that will be ES10 or ES2019. Um, so yeah, yeah, just a little bit of naming terminology first, just to, for you to understand what we mean by modern JavaScript. Um, so today, the general format of the session, we're going to look at just a couple of what we think are key features of modern JavaScript. We're going to look at some code examples of those. Um, so firstly, that will be more instructor-led, and you will be volunteering any you will be volunteering any um, suggestions you might have as to how we can sol solve the code together. Um, so we've prepared some snippets for you along those lines. So we'll be working in Chrome DevTools with that. Um, so if you want to join us and code along with us, that's fantastic. If not, if you've only got your phone or something like that with you, <laughs> then um, feel free just to, just to do what you can and participate in the discussions. That'd be great. So, um, yeah. And then at the end, we're going to look at our Kadiri platform and just do some training exercises. But we're, we'll come to that when we get to it. So... Come out, player. Yep. Okay. So, um, won't bother too much with just the words. We'll get into the code as soon as possible. But we're going to look today at the rest and spread operators. So they both have the syntax dot dot dot. If it's not clear what we mean, hopefully this will become clear when we look at some code. Um, they have lots of uses. So there's just a few uses listed up there on the board. Um, so we can gather a variable number of arguments into a single uh, parameter that we can later on use in our functions. And it was touted a little bit as a replacement for the arguments keyword. Um, so the arguments keyword has got a, a few problems. Um, mainly, it doesn't have access to lots of array methods because it's, it's not actually an array. It's an array-like object. So um, the rest operator can solve that issue for us. Uh, we can do other things, copy an array, merge arrays, we can now do similar things with objects since the revision in 2018. Um, and yeah, it's very useful when combined with things like array and object destructuring, which Ricardo will talk a little bit about later. But anyway, enough of the chit chat. Let's just move into some code and look at some real examples. Yep, so first thing is let's have a look how to deal with any kind of javascript modern javascript all javascript any kind of javascript right so in google chrome there is a very interesting way to deal with javascript this, this is probably the easiest way if this is the first time you're dealing with javascript and even if it's not the, easy, the first time even if you're a, a senior developer you can still you know take advantage of the benefits of using the integrated utilities in Google Chrome. How do we do that? Please open a new tab in your browser, right? Just, a, just an empty tab, right? Empty tab. Once you have an empty tab, if you do right click anywhere on the screen, you will see at the bottom, Jen is speaking the last option, but in my case is not the last, but it's, it's at the bottom for sure. You will see an option called inspect. <coughs> so just click on the inspect link and you will see something like that, more or less. Probably not with a dark theme, it will be probably a brighter screen. But anyway, you'll see lots of, you know, weird things. If you're any familiar with HTML, right? So, you know, that, that, that will be something that you may be aware of. 
the important thing for today is you will find uh, a tab with the name sources right could be the second one could be the third one depends on your setup but you'll find it for sure element network application security sources yeah if it's the very first time you open dev tools you will get nothing on it but on the left hand side you will see a tiny arrow pointing to the right so if you click on it if it's not expanded already you will have an empty list of things probably here please note there is another arrow on the very left hand side if you click on that tiny arrow pointing to the right again you will see a bunch of options page file system overrides content snippets a snippet blah 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 you following me yeah cool if anyone got lost please uh go daniel michael and jeff to just follow. raise your hand or something yeah yeah correct, correct correct Thanks. correct yeah the important option is snippets that will be probably the last one snippets right so please click on the snippets and you'll get an empty list of snippets because it's the very first, first time you open it, right? Um, also, I forgot to mention that even though on my screen, DevTools, this window is in full screen, it may not be your case. You may get that on the right hand side. You may get it at the bottom, right? It depends. So that's a good thing of modern Google Chrome. You can arrange the DevTools window anywhere. In this particular case, I will recommend you to select the first layout option. You see the three dots on the right hand side. Customize and control the tools. If you click on it, I will personally suggest to select the first one. Unlock this into a separate window why because then you got full control right it's full screen it's beautiful you, you know you get more space right cool so because it's the first time you are dealing probably with uh, javascript snippets simply please click on new snippet yeah and once you got a new snippet uh, I'm going to tell you what do you need to do to start dealing with the amazing world of JavaScript. The only thing you need to do, and this is not necessary, but this is a recommendation, is please open curly braces and close them. Yep. Why? It goes beyond the scope of this session. But that will help you in the future to avoid some kind of issues, scoping issues. And once you have that, you can start creating JavaScript. For instance, if I type console.log, hello JavaScript, if you type something like that, then we can run the snippet. How do we run the snippet? If you notice, there is a button at the bottom on the right hand side if you hover over it will tell you that if you press on that button it will run the snippet so if you click on that button you will see at the bottom this hello javascript message that's the way you prove that dev tools are okay this is a smoke test you know what a smoke test is you know, you have a very old car that used to it belong to your uh, grandfather or something like that. And you don't know if the car works okay or not. You start the engine and if there is any smoke from the back of the car, it means it works, right? Is it accurate? Of course it's not, right? The car may not work at all. But if there is no smoke, that means that something is clearly wrong, right? So this is a smoke test. If I got a hello Yosuke message, I'm relatively confident, relatively comfortable with the working environment. Any questions so far? No? Okay, so based on that, we already prepared some snippets and now Gray will go through them. Yep. Right, all yours. 
Fantastic. So did everyone get that console.log to print out on the bottom of their screen first? If, if not, just raise your hand and someone will come and just check you're all set up properly. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, okay. We've got a couple, couple of guys. <laughs> It's just fundamental we get these bits uh, sorted and then you can follow along a lot easier. Um, for the rest of you, just have a, a quick look at my data up here. You might want to create an, well, hold on. What, what type of data have we got on the screen? Can anyone just tell me? So, object. an object, yeah. So we've just got a basic JavaScript object there. Popularity rating, so we've just got some, some popular figures. Um, as you can see, people like Usain Bolt, Denzel Washington, they're quite popular. Uh, poor old Theresa May down the bottom, she's, she's not very popular at the moment due to Brexit. She's actually less popular than Lord Voldemort. So, um, yeah, not too popular at all, really, at the moment. Um, so this is the data we're going to be working with. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to particularly look at the rest and the spread operator. So that was introduced in 2015. Um, first things first, does anyone know how to just get the values out of that object? This is another new feature. It's a little bit of an aside, but does anyone know just how to get the values? So by that, I mean the number 77, 33, 72, 89. How do we just extract those values from an object? Anyone know? It's fine if you don't, because obviously that's what you're here to learn about JavaScript. So <laughs> that's cool. All right. Was that actually any, any ideas? Yeah, go on. It's not actually using the, the rest and the spread operator in this case just to get the values. Um, go, go ahead. Do you have an idea? Index. Could we use the index in some way? Uh, there's definitely an easy way. <laughs> um, so there's actually something built into the language called object.values now. So it's a built-in method that we can use. So really useful. Does what it says on the tin, basically. Um, so if I just... Uncomment this just so you can see it. Mm, that one is it. Yep. Um, so can you just see that highlighted code there? Um, so we can actually write a function just to extract out our object values. We'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can see. Fantastic. So I'm just going to move this down slightly as well so we've got a little bit more. Oops. Yep. Fantastic, good. Um, yeah, so we can actually just write a function like so. Um, hopefully you've written some JavaScript functions before. If not, um, very similar syntax that you'll see again and again and again. So we've got the, the keyword function to say we're creating a function. Um, we've given it a name. Uh, try and be really descriptive with your names in JavaScript. That's something we train a lot here in our boot camps to make sure you write elegant code that uh, you're not going to fall out with your colleagues when you give it give all your functions funny names and they don't know what it does at all. So, um, get popularity scores was what I called it. And then we're passing it that object and we're returning the values by using this built-in function here. So I'm not gonna go into that too much tonight because we're not concentrating on that, but that's just a little, little aside um, how you would get the values from an object. Okay, um, so based on that, we can set, oh, what's that, yep. Sorry, it's not my computer tonight, so I'm uh, doing the best I can. I'm not used to Max. Uh, this is Ricardo's computer. I hope you got better excuses. <laughs> no, no better excuses than that. Um, cool. So what we're going to look at now is just an old way of doing things. So let's say um, definitely pre-2015 JavaScript, and then we'll look at the modern comparison and see which you prefer. So... The idea of obviously updates the languages, it gets either a bit more readable or more performant. Um, so hopefully you can see that the language of JavaScript is moving in the right direction. Um, so let's have a look at an old way, perhaps, of doing things. So going right back to the start of the language. Yeah, we can uncomment all of that. Going back to uh, sort of 99, 97, um, I've just commented it out fully here. Um, you'd have to do something like this. And it's not the most readable thing. We're using things like null and undefined to, to apply um, a certain function. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's not the most readable. Um, a slightly more modern method is 
reduce. Um, so we can use reduce and we can use a built-in function math.max. Um, so if we just run that and we're going to run it based on this set of numbers here. So one, two, seven, five, three. And the idea of the function is just to return the maximum score or the maximum value from that. Okay, so as long as I've got everything else commented, that should run. Um, so remember, how do we run the code in Chrome? Say again? Uh, we're not going to console.log it. We're actually just going to run this code, and that will spit out the result of this, this function here that we've defined, old git max of array. Nope, so Ricardo mentioned just whenever you want to run code, you do command enter or control enter. Yeah, so if you've got some code in your, in your terminal, we can just do command enter. Oh, we're just, yeah, okay, we're just missing a return statement from our, our function here. Okay, and then running that, we would get the maximum number of seven. Okay. Now, has anyone used the set operator before, those three dots? No, okay. So, I was going to ask for suggestions maybe of how you could do it, but... Um, I mentioned at the start that the, the rest or the spread operator can take a list of scores and spread them out, perhaps. Um, so I've got a function here. So this is a more modern method we could use. I'm not saying it's 100% yet, but we're, we'll work on it to make sure it works. So again, we're just looking for the max score. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to return the max score using math.max. And for now, the scores that we're passing in are just clearly visible here. We're not using our, our data from the top yet, but we will look at how to do that shortly. Um, so again, what do we expect this function to return in our console down here when we run it? Seven, yeah, exactly, just the maximum number, right? Um, will this work how it is? Yes or no? Vote from the floor. Not sure? Yes. Yes. It, it looks right, doesn't it? I mean, we're passing in some scores. We're returning math.max and passing in the scores to the, the math.max function. Someone says no. Fantastic. Why, why not? It's an array. What's an array? What you, what you want to put into it. What I want to put into it or what I am putting into it? Okay, so you're saying scores is an array, yeah? So it, this is an array down here with these square brackets. Yeah, yeah? why is that a problem? Uh, I don't know the technical reason, but okay. um, that can't handle an array. Okay, so let's, let's, should we run the code and see what happens? Or? I think it won't work because, in speaking, if you said, if you're sure something will work, in speaking, it doesn't work, right? <laughs> so if you're questioning what will work, it's that a bit, won't bit, work, right? Bit, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, so I'm gonna run it anyway and we'll see what we get, yeah. Um, but I like the comment about the array, so just let's run this and see what happens. Um, okay, we've got this N-A-N, so that actually stands for not a number in JavaScript. Um, and that's because math.max is not expecting an array, it's expecting to be passed numbers. Yeah, makes sense, it's a math operation. Um, so at the moment here we're just passing it an array, they are of numbers, but it's looking for a comma separated list of numbers. That's just how math.max works. So if we come across a situation like this, we can use the dot 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 to spread our array into a comma separated list of values. So that's a key bit of learning right there, yeah? So all we need to do to make this work is actually add dot 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 in front of our scores like that. And then that will take the array and spread it out into the values Let's run that again. Seven. It works. So that's a pretty powerful um, use of the, the spread operator right there. So whenever you've got array, an array, you want it as a, a se separate values for use with math functions. So math.min would work as well. Then you can do something similar like this. Obviously, I know it's hard to code along live with these examples. There's a lot of code to, to rewrite, but hopefully you can go away in your own time, watch on YouTube, and try and reproduce these results for yourself, be a really good learning exercise, and play around with that spread operator, 
see how it works with different data types and all things like that, okay? Um, yeah, so let's, let's now just try and mix it up a little bit and see some other uses of the uh, rest and the spread operator. So, uh, coming back to our example right at the top, Um, so what about then if we had maybe two arrays in here or, or some other versions? Should we, should we try it with, with two arrays? So up here we got our scores from our object. Yep, so we've got these scores here. We ran a, ran a function and assigned it into a scores variable, okay? So if I actually call this function here and I give it a second argument and we pass in the scores, that's actually going to be passing in a second array here. Yeah? So, what can we do with the rest operator to make this function still work? I mean, will it work as it, as it is? I've asked that question again. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is a, a too complicated example to begin with. Maybe we should just look at, um, let's say... Let's say our scores were just passed in as numbers themselves. Yeah? So we've actually got five separate arguments being passed in there. Um, so scores is referring to, to what in this instance? Anyone know? So this is just... Say again? Yeah. So the first one, yeah, so scores is actually just referring to the number one now, rather than the whole array. So we're missing all this data. Um, so we've looked at how the rest operator can spread, but I mentioned it can also gather. So if we use it up here, um, in the, when we're naming the parameters, then we can gather all of these arguments just into one variable. Any idea how we do that? <laughs> Remember the syntax is the same between rest and gather? Just. Dot, 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 you got it. <laughs> yeah? So what this will do is it will take all of those scores and gather them into a variable called scores, which we can then use in our function however we want. So if I did do console.log and just console.log, oops, I can't spell Scores. Let's, let's remove the dot, dot, dot first and just test uh, that lady's theory from over there. You can have a breakpoint as well, right? I, I could have a breakpoint. You want me to add a breakpoint? Yeah, try it. Uh, save it. Save it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Command this. Oh, no. Oh, I don't. Oh, I'm not used to it. Mac. Did I break it? What did I touch? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So okay. now try it with a breakpoint on 29. Just touch it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. If you see now, we click on line number 29, so that's a breakpoint. One of the sexiest aspects of the tools is you can add breakpoints. A breakpoint is a way to tell the browser, please stop on that line so I can analyze my variables, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, okay, so, yep. so let's, let's run that, see what happens. So remember, command, enter, or just click down here. Okay, so it's stopped there, and it's highlighted what a certain variable's value is at that point in your code, yeah? So on line 29, scores is set to the value 1. So that's correct, yeah? It's just taken the first argument because we've only got one name here. Um, if you wanted to assign a name to number 2, then we could do comma, score 2, something like that, yeah? Um, but let's, let's keep it like this for now. And then what happens... So I just need to skip that to the end. Yep, yep so obviously our, our function fails there, gets a type error. Um, so instead, if we gather all of those scores um, into 
well, let's see what it does. Yeah. So we put the dot 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 now. We're still console.login scores. Let's run it again. See what our scores variable is set to this time. I need to save it first. I need to save it because it's not auto saving. Yep. yep. And let's run again. So this time, just by putting those three dots, it's gathered all of those values into an array. And we've now got the values one, two, seven, five, and three. So mm -hmm. the same as we manually did before, but you don't know what type of data you're going to get um, given to your function sometimes. So this is a way of, if you knew that you were getting a comma separated list, this is a way of gathering them into array. And arrays are so powerful in JavaScript. There's so many built-in methods um, in JavaScript to, to deal with working with arrays. So that's another really useful um, use of the, this time, the gather, or the rest operator, as it's called in this case. All right. Um, yeah, we're, we're moving on quite a bit with time, so I think that's probably enough to, to leave it there for that example. Um, so there was one other feature I wanted to talk about as well before I hand over to Ricardo, and that is set. So we'll follow a, a similar walkthrough to these. Um, just back to the slide, Ricardo. So. Yep. Oh, yep. Sorry about the noise, not what's going on next door. Um, yep, so we've looked at some examples. Um, and now there's just a little, <laughs> if you can read that, just a little house warning. So, oh, in fact, oh no, you can't see that, that's good. Uh, it's just on my screen. Um, so if, I don't know what to say really, but um, just if you're of a sensitive dis disposition, then just maybe look away now, because we've got, we've got a problem with something invading our code. Um, so, that's what's happened. David Hasselhoff has invaded our code and he's found a way to reproduce <laughs> himself to, to boost his very low popularity ratings. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm going to get off that screen as quickly as possible. Um, but yeah, basically, that's it. So, <laughs> let's move back and, and look at that example. Okay, uh, quick, how do I do it? Oh no, it's you stuck. Can't. No, it's I can't. Stuck. Escape, yeah, yeah, yeah. escape. You need to restart the laptop, bro, you know. All right, so let, let's have a look here. So as, as we can see, our, our people list has now changed. We've got the same names up there. I know we didn't use our scores from last time. We, we wanted to move on really for time, but um, we, we'll see some similar examples when we look at some training. But anyway, we, we've got a, what type of data now is this? So we've got some people. What type of data? Just shout it out. Array. array, fantastic. Yeah, array because of the square brackets. So it's an array literal like that. Um, and it's filled of a list of strings, right? So all the names. As you can see, David Hasselhoff has appeared many, many times, which is not right at all. So we want this list to be unique. We want to have only one instance of each name per person, right? Makes sense. So there is a, uh, a new data type in JavaScript that was introduced again in 2015. So that was a big revision then in 2015. Um, and it's called a set. So let me just make sure I might need to comment out some of this stuff as well. Um, a few spoilers, sorry. Um, hopefully you can't process that really quickly and we'll just look at this. Problem? Yep. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I commented out your little uh, scope bracket at the end, so make sure you keep that in there. Um, Yep, so let's, let's just play around with, with a set. This is the way we construct a set in JavaScript. So we use the new keyword to create a new instance of a set. And then we open up the brackets and as an argument, we can pass in um, any iterable object in, in JavaScript. And an array is an example of one of them. Anyone else know any other iterables in JavaScript? Someone mentioned... Uh, like index earlier, so think of maybe things that, that have an index is almost a way to, to see whether it works. Say again, sorry? Lists. Yeah, so object works with sort of keys and values, doesn't it? So object is not actually an iterable. Uh, if I passed an, an object into that, well, it can be, it can be, but like an, an object literal is, if I, if I change that into an object, it wouldn't work with set, it wouldn't. Well, yeah. I think we yeah. should distinguish between iterable and enumerable. enumerable yeah. right? There are two new things in, in JavaScript world. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so an array is one, a string is another one, um, a set itself is an iterable. Um, there are, yeah, probably one or two others, but yeah, um, that'll do for now. Um, so we're creating a set from this data. So if I add, let's, let's add a console login here as well. Uh, and what have I called it? Example set. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that should be fine. Um, so we've got an add method that we can use with any set. And it again, it does what it says on the tin. So it just adds that value to the existing set. So we're taking... Uh, right, hold on, let, let's do one more console log just to see what is returned initially. Whoops. And it was okay. Should I put the breakpoints there again? Mm. Not necessary. Let's clear our terminal. So if you're getting lots of code in your terminal, just make sure you clear it using that button there. Um, okay, so this first console log will display the result of the set. And then uh, okay. uh, that, does anyone know? Wait, 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 no, 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 no. Don't mask your issue, right? Does anyone know what line eleven will be told now? Yeah, yeah. What? That will throw an error, right? Because console doesn't exist, right? In one of the workshops this week, one of our students typed something beautiful. <laughs> Console.lol. Right? <laughs> I'm going to call for that on the next revision of JavaScript. <laughs> console.lol, right? But for now, unfortunately, we need to stick to the boring console. <laughs> it could be a way to print silly mistakes to the yeah. screen, I think. Yeah, console.lol. Nice. Um, yeah, so what, what do we expect that to return? Any ideas? One, two, three, then just what, one. Exactly, one, two, three in a set. And then here we try and add a four to it. So what would our set be now? One, two, three, four. Here we try and add a one to it. What would our set be now? Okay, so we've got a few different answers there. So let's, let's run it and see what happens. So the answers we had were just one, two, three, four, or we had one, two, three, four, one for the room. So let, let's see. Um, let's run that. We've got undefined again. So. Another console.log. Oh, no, this is fine. This is fine. Okay. So we can see our first console.log. We have one, two, three here, and it's in a set. Oh, is it just cutting off the screen? Yeah. So we'll just yeah. adjust it slightly. Fantastic. Um, so the first console.log on line 11 gave us this, a new set object with one, two, three in it. Um, the, uh, the line 13 gave us, after adding four, gave us one, two, three, four. But when in line 14, when we tried to add another one, it said, oh, hang on a minute, we've already got a one in our set. We only allow unique values in a set. Okay, so that's, that's why it didn't add that value into the set. We've still got four items in our set. So, in a modern JavaScript, we can use that to avoid getting duplicates in our, um, in our data. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, you could do a check. Does yeah. does that already exist in the array? If so, um, if it doesn't exist, you know, push it push it to that array. Or if not, then um, yeah, just <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> garbage collect it. <laughs> um, so a really old way of doing it it would be. Something like this. So, did you just means remove duplicates? So, do you, do you roll that? I I got this actually off a similar example of. Oh no, hold on. It was in a it was in a library. Apparently, it's quite performant because it's obviously old code and it's. Does no one understand that? So e no one exactly. Would catch it. So, so that's the idea, right? It's yeah. um, as you can see from quite a few lines of code, you know, I'm not even really gonna explain it because it's, it's not very readable. If you wrote this function in, in your workplace, you would not be very popular. Um, but essentially you're, uh, you know, comparing, doing nested loops, comparing, you know, does it, does it exist or not? Yeah. If so, then let's splice out one and you're mutating, a, you know, um, 
mutating objects, which is not not good practice. All things like that. Anything to add to that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that the majority of the JavaScript experts, they tell you, you need to create clean code, readable code, so you can work with others, and they will understand your code, and you will be able to work as part of a team, blah, blah, blah. There are other developers that they say the, the, the opposite. Please create as bad code as possible. The, the worse, the better, right? Why? Because if you create this code, you'll never, you'll never get fired because no one will be able to maintain <laughs> that piece of code, right? So, <laughs> probably you shouldn't say that while we are recording, but anyway, of the record. <laughs> let's, let's see, does it actually work? <laughs> okay, does it work? Well, um, so obviously it's, it's returning an array now. We want, we want the data back, back as an array. I should have mentioned that, but anyway. Does it have David Hasselhoff in it? Yes, it does, but how many times? Only once. So it actually works. Yeah, it does what we want. But there are simpler ways to do that. <laughs> um, a slightly more modern way we could, could do is, is here. Um, so again, this is sort of the ES5 uh, around 2009, 2011 um, sort of version. Quite a bit more readable using really useful array functions like filter. So again, we're filtering out based on certain criteria. Um, so in this case, we're filtering out David Hassel. <laughs> um, and if we just run that one now, does it do the same? Oh, let's clear it. And okay, yeah, so that works as well. We can see down the bottom. Again, I'm not gonna go into it too much, but you can see it's already a big improvement in readability, yeah? Mm. Um, now, my challenge to you, can we use set to make this even simpler? Yeah, yeah good answer. It would be a really rubbish workshop if we couldn't, <laughs> right? Well, why have I just talked about set if we can't do it with set? Um, any sort of idea how in the syntax? Could you, could you dictate to me and I type it? Or? <clears throat> yeah, um, um, so just speak up a little bit so I can hear you. Uh huh. Okay. Right. <laughs> should I put this in a function first, shall we? <laughs> Hold on one second. I'll just put it in a function. Um, oh no, wrong command again. Okay, so you're gonna start in a function. Yeah. Okay, so, so let me just. Is dark and you said? Uh, I'm scared of it all three. Um. All right, so that's fine, that's up there. All right. Any arguments? Called? <laughs> um, so what we're trying to do, we're trying to uh, filter out some certain names, yes? Yeah? So I could pass it names. So we're trying to return something. No, so we're using the new keywords. Yeah, so we're creating a set. Good start. Okay, let me close this. Yeah. And this is spread. Spread it, yeah. Three dots as before. Fantastic, yeah. Names. Names. This is how it shouldn't work unless we put the spread before. You can close it. You done? So you're trying to create a new set. You're trying to spread the names. Okay. Um, so what do you think that will return? Error. Oh. <laughs> Error. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, right? it's not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, error or a set? Error or a set. A set, <laughs> a set with how many items in it? One Hasselhoff, so, so, so eight items, Fa fantastic. Um, so let's run it, I might need to change the, uh, just need to call it first, yeah. so. Oops, attempt, and what have I called my data at the top? People, okay. Okay, and we've got some weird dot, dot, dot where I started writing your function. Okay, let's try running that. Oh, look at that. I've got some interesting results there. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
So what has it done? Did it take every single one? So it's spreading the string, right? Yep. 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 Yeah. So not quite the result we were looking for. Yeah. Any revisions to that? So if we did just a new set from the names, because remember an array is an iterable, yeah. what will we get now? Yep, um, so you can create a new set from any iterable object and an array is an iterable object. Ah, yeah, so let, let's, let's see. Ooh. Okay, so we've now got a set with eight elements in, yeah. which, which is a fantastic start. Um, and, and, and if you're happy working with sets, then that could be the end of it. But um, if you notice in our previous examples, we were trying to return, well, I've cleared them now, but we were trying to return an array with eight elements in. So there's just a small revision that we can make to yeah, actually. Can... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Can we cast it? Can we cast it? What do you mean by cast it? Um, change the type. Change the type. So are we returning an array? If they have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say for the purpose of this question, we want to return an array. So are you saying enclose our set in an array? Don't we have to call it like new array or construct a new thing? No, we can actually just use square brackets to create a new instance of an array. Yeah, I think we're getting close. Yeah. We're getting close. Anyone else got any? Three characters left. <laughs> three, on, three characters. Three characters not what's four, what's not the two. workshop about? <laughs> do, how many? Dot, 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 did you say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically the dot, dot, dot will work on any iterable as well. And a set is an iterable, so we can spread sets just the same way as we spread arrays. So we previously had this set down here with eight elements. If we want to spread them into a new array, we can go dot, 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 new set, and that should return an array with eight elements. Let's, let's run it, and then I will pass over. Let's, I don't we add the console logs in there as well still, I think, so let's run it. Oops, let's run it over here. How about that? An array with eight elements. So, yeah. Play with those examples yeah. in your own time at home. The rest in the spread operator, the dot, dot, dot syntax, and a really new, a new useful data type called a set, which will help with many things, but one good use is creating unique um, collections of elements. All right, guys, I think I'll pass over now, yeah? So thank you, Gray. Uh, so basically, Gray has been talking about how JavaScript has evolved since 1997 to 2015. 16-ish. Now I would like to move on and I would like to show you a relatively complex example which I'm not expecting everybody to understand but I would like to show you how to do things with modern JavaScript versus very modern JavaScript to see how much the standard has evolved since 2015. So do you know what GitHub is? Yes, what's GitHub? Yeah, correct. GitHub is where the code is. GitHub is the Bible of coding, right? According to GitHub, JavaScript is not only the most popular programming language in the world. It's more popular than top two and three combined, Python and Java, right? That's the way to prove JavaScript is the right language to learn if you want to break into the market. So uh, the example I would like to run is I would like to integrate with GitHub API. So I would like to fetch some data from the internet. Right, so I'm going to do some coding. Let's see if it works. And I would like to show you how to do that with modern JavaScript and how to do that again with very modern JavaScript. So 
Uh, the very first thing is I like to show you how to integrate with GitHub. So, for instance, um, do you know that GitHub has some APIs? Um, for example, do you know what React is? It's another type of JavaScript. It's a library. It's the framework. No, there are some very hard discussions on the internet. Is JavaScript a framework? Yes, no, tell, tell me outside. People get, get very aggressive on that. Right. It goes beyond the scope of this session to explain is, is, if, if React is a framework or a library. It is a library, right? So uh, it's actually one of the most popular repos on the internet in GitHub. You know how many stars React has today? How many people like it? 122,000 people, it's a lot, yeah, that's a lot. So React was developed by Facebook. We do lots of meetups about React, so if you're interested in that, on the 27th, I think it's the last meetup of the season, very popular. Today, I would like to show you how to get data from the React repository in GitHub. I would like to show you how to get, for instance, how many issues React has. If you find a problem with React, you can create any issue, right? And the React team will look after, hopefully one day. I would like also to show you how to get releases. What's the current version of React? What was the previous version? When was it released? All these sort of things, right? And then at the end, I would like to compare it a bit against Vue. Do you know Vue, JS? Yes? Is the big rival today, right? There is, you know, China versus United States, React versus Vue, right? So these are the top, the most popular UI libraries in the world today, yeah? Actually, it's interesting because Vue passed recently React on the stars. It's not 122K, it's 128K. It's a big fight, big fight, right? Anyway, um, so I would like to show you, I'm not, as I said, expecting everybody to understand every line of what I'm doing, but at least I want everybody to see how simpler JavaScript got over time. So the very first thing I would like to do is I would like to create a function to fetch the data, to get the data from, uh, from GitHub. So how do we do that? I'm going to create a function here. Oops, function fetch data. As part of that function, I will receive an endpoint. An endpoint is essentially a URL, right? A URL, external URL that will give us some data. So then with modern JavaScript, we can do a request. We can do fetch endpoint. And then we can use then to transform the result into a JSON, into something readable for JavaScript. That's the most simplistic way to go to the internet and get data from the internet, right? So I will, again, do a smoke test just to see if it works. So look, I'm going to invoke fetch data dot then. So I got the data. So I would like to do console.log. Here is the data. So if we run that example, Yes, again, to see if it works or not. Ooh, right, it doesn't work because I forgot to return. Every time you create a JavaScript function, generally speaking, we should return something. Look, you can see after my change, immediately I got data from the internet. All the details of the React repository, lots of details, lots of things here, right? Whatever, whatever they mean, right? So the GitHub API is pretty sexy, to be honest. So for instance, this gives us an overview of the React project. But if I want to get the list of the latest issues, do you know how to do that? <coughs> we can do slash issues, yeah? So if I type slash issues, that will return an array, look, of 30 objects, the last 30 issues created in React, right? So you can, for instance, check the title, yeah, whatever that means, right? All the most recent issues on the React repo. Right, so, and also I can get the, last, the latest releases. Instead of issues, I can type releases, right? So this is one of the reasons why 
GitHub is so popular because it's very easy to play with. Look, now what they got instead is, look, you see 16.8.2. This is actually the latest version of React the released on Valentine's, right? The February 14th, right? <laughs> so you can get all these details very easily, very quickly. And this is pretty awesome. So um, what happened if I want to get both? I want to get, I want to display Please show me the latest issues and please show me the latest set of releases. So we can deal with that. We can, let, let's prototype. That may require few iterations. So let me show, uh, you see, we got the releases here. And then, uh, because we got the releases, if, for instance, uh, there is a way to, to trigger both in parallel. So I'm going to create a new function, get data. Right? I'm just trying to encapsulate the logic. The functions in JavaScript, the smaller, the better, right? So why I'm doing that? Because essentially, I want to invoke gate data, and I want to pass, what was the repo name? The repo name is called React, yeah? So I want to get all the details about the React project. And then, once I got them, once I got them, uh, data, then I will do console.log, the data is data. So why I'm doing that? I'll show you in a second. Because the first principle I would like to show you about modern JavaScript is template literals. Do you know what a template literal is? Yeah? So at the moment, look, I'm passing React. I want to get all the details of the React repo. So I can bind to that variable here, repo name, if you want. Yeah? You can call it however you want. Can I call it Brexit? Yes, I can, right? This doesn't matter. Whatever I put here will reference to that string below. For readability purposes, let's call it repo name. And now, how do we replace React with the repo name? We can do that, right? We can create a complex expression, you see, adding pluses, static code, plus variable name, plus static code, right? We can do that, that's correct. So if we try that, let's see if that works, first of all. Yes, it works, right? Still give us the list of releases about React. So if I replace React with view, we'll do that later on, we'll do that later on, right? It will work eventually as well. Cool. So with modern JavaScript, there is a simpler way to join string literals and variables using, does anyone know? Backticks, correct. I'm pretty sure half of you've never used that in your keyboard. Look, backticks. You see that? If you're a Mac user, now everybody's looking at the keyboard. What is that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a Mac user, they are on the left at the bottom. If you're a Windows user, they are on the left, but on top, right? Backticks. So look at how sexy the syntax of backticks is. First of all, you surround your entire string with backticks, and then you don't need to mess around with the quotes and everything. Simply just put dollar symbols surrounding your variables. Something like that. It helps on readability, right? So again, if I run it again, it works. One of the classic problems of junior developers is they spend hours creating a snippet, and then at the end of the day, they run it and they expect to work, right? That, will, that only happens in Hollywood movies. In real life, the way it works is you should do small change and test it, small change and test it, small iterations, because if you failed, then you know exactly why, because the problem happened on the last 30 seconds, not on the last three hours, yeah? Okay, cool, so we got here uh, the uh, link to get the, uh, you know, the, all the releases of React, because I'm going to call it again to get not just the releases, but also the issues. I don't want to copy that again. This is pretty horrible, right? So I'm going to create a variable, let, GitHub API equals that, yeah? Something like that. So I'm creating a variable, so now we can reuse it. Now, look at how much the fetch 
request changes. Yeah? It's a bit more elegant. You agree on that? Fetch data, GitHub API, then repo name, then releases. Yeah? And once I got that, I can do dot then. OK, I got the releases. I got them locally. Releases, right? Now, I can get, because I already got the releases, I can re call fetch data again. This is getting complicated, right? I never said that was going to be easy. I'm trying to explain the way we solve these kind of problems starting from 2015 to 2018. And I'll show you how much this has improved in the last year. But this is the classic way. So this is a request. Once the request is, is sorted, you do another request. And once the request is sorted, then you got issues. So I need to change releases with issues. Yeah. So then I, once I got the issues, I'm going to return the eventual result. Return what? Issues, issues, releases, releases. This is pretty horrible, but hey, it's what it is, right? Let's see if that works, and then we'll see how to make it more human friendly. Let's see if that works. Look, it does work. The data is, look, we got an object with two keys. First of all, the issues and then the releases. So that's technically speaking correct. However, this is mind blowing, right? So whenever you see this code with multiple levels of indentation, there is something smelly. Yeah? Something is not quite correct. Uh, so historically speaking, this is what we call callback hell. Right, if I do a quick search on Google images, callback hell, Right, you play Street Fighter, it's a callback hell, right? This code is absolutely horrible. It's a good time to refactor it a bit. So that's one of the things I would like to show you today. But before that, maybe you've noticed, maybe not, that I return, look at this, let's focus on these lines, which are pretty simple, right? So we're returning an object. That's the name of the key of the object, issues. And that's the name of the variable that has the data, issues. And then we have another key, releases, which has a value with the same name, releases. Does anyone know how to optimize that with modern JavaScript? Correct. Correct. As Chris suggested, with modern JavaScript, we can do that. Look at how sexy this is. That's it. Simpler. That means return a key called issues, and the value of issues is a variable called issues. And then add another key called releases, and the value of releases is the variable releases. And because now that got simpler, we can even inline it, right? Look. One line, even simpler. Yeah? Return issues releases, simplicity. If we run the example, it should still work. Correct. You see, we still got the latest issues and we still got the latest releases. Any question? No? So I would like now, and this is the very last change I will introduce today, how to solve the very same problem. Please keep in mind that horrible code. Well, that's not horrible, but you know, keep in mind this code because now you will see how sexy you, modern JavaScript is. And still, this is 2015 JavaScript. Now we will introduce 2018 JavaScript. Have you ever heard about something called async await? Yes, this is the, probably the most, the, the hottest topic in modern JavaScript. So, with modern JavaScript, I can, I'm going to put it on top and I'll remove them just, just to, to keep both on the screen so you can compare them. So I'm going literally to do the same thing in three lines. Look, literally three lines, I'm not joking. So, I can create a variable called releases equals await Look, 
that. Then I can create another variable. We'll see why this fails in a minute. We'll see why this fails. But for now, before checking the error, I'm going to create another variable, issues. Same thing, await fetch data issues. So in other words, we are transforming a asynchronous function with several callbacks in it into a synchronous one. You see, this is much easier to read. Please give me the list of releases. Please give me the list of issues. And once I got that, I can simply do, oops, return, same thing, releases, issues. This is way, way, way more. I hope everybody agrees that is way more readable than that. Yeah? So now, that's still not correct. Why that's not, that's not correct yet? Because await, which is a new, it's a very new, fresh word in JavaScript, is a way to tell the browser, please go to the internet, go to GitHub, yeah? And then don't do anything else, don't progress until GitHub returns the list of issues. It's a way to block the execution of the JavaScript code. However, look at the error. This is one of the things that the modern JavaScript has also evolved. In the past, errors were very generic. Cannot find undefined. Well, what that means? Now, Stalin, await is only valid in async function. That means by the first time in history, we can add a prefix on the function. Look, async, and the error is gone. So this is a way to tell JavaScript, oh, be careful because this function is going to be very sexy. So be ready to have to control the code in a special way. So when we put this async, technically speaking, we are telling JavaScript that this function will be a bit special. It goes beyond the scope of the session to explain the technical aspects of async. But for now, just keep bear in mind that whenever you use await to stop the execution, you need to add the async prefix on the function, yeah? So now look, I'm going to comment that. Let me see if it works. First of all, some pain will work. <laughs> it does work, right? It's literally the same result, but you can see how much better that looks, right? Compared to that callback hell bunch of lines, yeah? So this is probably the most important aspect, arguably, of modern JavaScript, yeah? Um, so just to recap, we've been talking about promises, we've been talking about template literals, we've been talking about uh, async, await, we've been talking about so th this kind of syntax, I think I didn't mention that, but this kind of syntax where we are removing that, right? This is called object shorthand, yeah, object shorthand. Yes, uh, off topic, well, not necessarily off topic, but if you have a variable, let fruits equals apple and banana, yeah? So then do you know how to display the apple? How? No, I want to access the first element of the array. How do we do that? Correct. We can do that, right? Fruit zero. So if we do fruit zero, that will display what? Uh, Apple. Correct. 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 With modern JavaScript, we can do something very sexy, which is called uh, array destructuring. So we can type, let look at that. Apple, sorry, uh, like that. Apple comma banana equals fruits. Does it make any sense? So here we are creating two variables, apple and banana, and then will be, they will be automatically assigned. Apple will be assigned to the first element on the array. Banana will be automatically assigned to the second element of the array. So if we display console.log apple, what will that display, guys? Apple. apple, correct, yeah? If we add some exclamation marks, will display, right? Whatever goes on the first element of the position. If we put Donald Trump, it will get displayed as well, yeah? 
So that's the way you destructure an array. The same principle applies to objects. So if I have a variable called character equals first name Donald, last name Trump. So the way, sorry, this is that's wrong. The way you access the first name and the last name, you can do a console.log. You can even create a variable, right? You can do let first name equals character dot first name. Let last name equals character dot last name. This is valid, but a bit boring, right? So you can also do console.log. The first name is first name, you know, all these things, right? The last name is last name, right? So you can do that, and that's, that's correct. Don't get me wrong, that's, that's fine. You see, the first name is Donald, the last name is Trump. But with modern JavaScript, we can simplify that. We can do object destructuring. So we can do, look, let first name, last name equals character. Simpler, right? So what we do here is pretty much the same thing. We are creating a new variable called first name, and the value of the first name variable will be the same as character.firstName. We are also, in the same line, creating another variable, a second variable called last name, and the value of the last name variable will be the same as character.lastName. Yeah? Object destructuring. That's a way to access object and array properties easier. Any question? No? Because we are a bit out of time, the last part of the session, which will be 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll call it a day, is I would like to do an interactive test with you, with whoever is interested. So as part of the Codiri Bootcamp, we have created a bunch of online tools to help you become a better developer. So now Gray will do a, a bit of training about the REST operator. So it will be very quick, just to give you an idea about what kind of tools we, you can use, you can sign up, and you can, for free, of course, uh, play with them. Hi again, guys. If you want to follow along yourselves, um, just go to kadiri.com um, slash join. It's probably the easiest link to get there. Um, kadiri.com slash join. Um, if you're not registered, just, just register, or you can just follow along on the screen and do that later in your own time. Um, on the left-hand side, there's a little training link. If intermediate is locked for you, then you can just type intermediate up here in the taskbar. Yeah, I think I spelled it right this time. And that will bring up a list of the intermediate training, and we're going to look at the REST operator, because that's what we've done today. So let's just have a look on there. And now it's over to you guys to do a little bit of work. So... Yeah, let's zoom in so you can see it. So if you haven't seen this platform before, uh, basically this is our training platform, so totally free to everyone. So you just got to register with username and password, and then you can um, do these exercises in your own time. Really useful JavaScript training. We use it with our bootcamp students here as well. Um, so they found it really useful to get a lot out of it and get some learning done. Um, so as we can see here, our job basically is to write this function that is named, so get min value. And when we pass uh, these, these arguments or these, this bit of data into the function, this is our expected result on the right-hand side. So we did something similar earlier. We get getting the maximum score. So this time we've got to get the minimum score. So hopefully you've paid attention and you've learned a few things tonight. So let's, let's have a look, see if we can solve these together. Uh, two fingers. Just two fingers. Yeah. All right. Ah, nice. OK, guys, so can you write the function for me? What do you think needs to go in here? Shall I zoom out so we can see the whole thing? Or what do you reckon what's best? Can you follow, follow along with that? Is that too small, or is that OK? I know a lot of the guys who are further back have got on their own screens anyway. So yeah, is that OK? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so what could we call these, these arguments here? Anything? Give me a name. Numbers? Yeah. <laughs> Let's call it numbers. Yeah. Um, and it's a function we need to return. So what 
shall we return in this case? And you've got some little hints down here on the left. It says, please use math.min alongside the rest parameter. So, uh, yep. Please use math.min and other max. Good start. Okay, so we're returning math.min. Spread out the numbers. Spread out the numbers. How would we spread out the numbers? Uh, dot, dot, dot. What? Well, I've called it numbers, so spread out the numbers. Okay. I'll leave that off for a second. Um, should, we, should we run that? So, in our platform. Just yep. Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I got. Okay, so how we evaluate our code in our platform, there's a little blue button up here, which looks like a chemistry set, a chemistry uh, flask, whatever you want to call it. Um, if we click that, that will run our code and evaluate it against our expected test conditions over here. Yeah, our, our tests here to validate our code. Um, so we can see it's gone green, everything's correct, but um, there's a little elegance console down here as well, and it says missing semicolon. You, you had something to say? No, no you're right. No, it's right. Yep. So um, that's just a way of making sure that we write elegant code and well yeah i won't go into it too much but it's something we train in the boot camp again um so if i run that now it says no against issues found and we can move on all right okay guys so you know the format someone suggests how we're going to solve this one so can we all read that so our task is to um yeah, basically sort the numbers that are passed as separate arguments, you notice here. Yeah, so we've got one number, comma, another number, comma, and then gather that, shall we say, into an array. And sort it. Yeah? So, any I... <laughs> I'm really good with Mac trackpads, in case you haven't noticed, guys. <laughs> All right. Um... So, any ideas? Who can start me off? So first we just need to name our, our parameter. What do we have? Yeah, so numbers, we had numbers, right? Fantastic. Return as always, yeah, so we get some result back. What next? Did we have any hints on this one? Probably said use, use sort, use the array method sort. And use the rest parameter to capture the list of arguments. Mm. So remember, we've got three different arguments there, or in this case, we've got four. In this case, we've got three. In this case, we've got two. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, right. Now, Ricardo, yes, all right. All right. <laughs> I'll go back. Uh, yeah, so rest. Rest there, there. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll just write in what we had again. Um, but for instance, if we had two numbers, we might put in numbers as num1, comma, num2. Oops, um. Something like that. But that would only work for the case if we had two numbers. So using that gather, that, um, yeah, the, the dot, dot, dot operator, we can make our function work for a variable number of arguments. So we called our argument number, or numbers. Yep. But if we wrote it like that, that would only, remember when we had that case and we printed out the number one to the console, it only would print out that first, it only would assign um, the variable to the value of the first argument. So how do we make it? We got gather? some feedback on, from YouTube. Oh yeah, so YouTube someone, answer, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, someone says in Manon, says in put dot 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 in front of numbers parameter and then return numbers dot sort. Okay. Let's try that. So Manon said put dot 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 to gather all those numbers into just one variable. So that will create an array with all those numbers, variable amount of numbers, depending on our test case. And what was it? He said return numbers dot sort. Returns, return numbers dot sort. Okay. Just like that with nothing inside? Yeah, yeah. that's what he suggested. Yeah. Okay. And I'll put the semicolon on this time. Yeah. And let's try it. What's your shortcut to uh, command enter? To uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Correct. So he's right, right? Fantastic. Good. Does Do people understand where we're going with this code? Is it making a little bit of sense? I know if, if this is your first time seeing these things, it's a lot to take in. But are you at least sort of following along, even if you're not aware of the syntax and, and things like that? Logically, does it does it make sense what we're doing? Yeah? yeah? Is there a simple way to sort it the other way around? Like from 6 to minus 1? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so the default sort is ascending, yeah? yeah? 
So if we wanted to sort it descending, you can pass a... Um, <laughs> All right, that's, that's one method, yeah. So you could do numbers.sort, and then there is another built-in method called dot .reverse that we could call as well. Um, obviously, I'll evaluate this. It will be wrong for this question, but we can see what it returns. So you see now it's reversed the order of our sort. Um, and with, with the one case, it was still correct because there's only one number. There is another way to do that, however. Um, you can pass... Oops can pass a callback function in here. So this is not callback hell. This is a good way to use callbacks uh, in this function. Um, so if I passed in number one and number two, for example, this is modern syntax as well. So this is a, an arrow function. Um, yep, so if you can see that there. And the, the default ascending way of sorting is doing num1, minus num2. It's just passing it, basically, a sorting algorithm so it can work out, based on the value of that, whether it's minus um, zero or positive, which way to sort it. So num1 minus num2 will sort it ascending. So clue, maybe, to how to sort it descending? Num2 minus num1. Num2 minus num1, exactly, yeah. So that's a way to sort things descending. And... Yep. So, why can I not pinch today? <laughs> um, so if we run that, and the result is exactly the same, yeah? So we've still got um, our array in our descending order, yeah? Thanks for that question. It's a really good, useful, um, useful thing to be able to do in JavaScript. So a couple of ways there we suggested, re using reverse or um, passing a callback function to the sort method. All right. Um, We've got time for any more? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, let's, it, right? yeah. yeah. Um, so that was just a, a quick intro to our training platform. So the standard is it gives you 60 minutes for five questions. Um, so we've just skipped. Oh, we didn't. Oh, and we didn't submit that correct answer oh, for the oh. for the second one. Oh, what a shame. We should have changed it back, but <laughs> we got it right, and then we changed it to the wrong answer because we reversed the sorting algorithm. But no matter, no matter. Um, do you want to talk about these or shall I go through these? Let's go. Yeah, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, hopefully this will be for those new to JavaScript and even for those who are maybe modernizing their JavaScript skills or um, want to brush up on their JavaScript skills. We've got three different levels of training, beginner, intermediate, and expert. So this was intermediate. So there are easier, more basic things because we covered a lot of ground today. But this is just where we put the, the rest and the spread operator on our platform. Um, so once you've completed your exercises, there's some really useful metrics here, and we do actually use these on the boot camp to, to send out to employers and things like that who are interested in hiring JavaScript developers. So if you get a good rank on our platform and, and things like that, then it does boost your, boost your profile if you're looking to break into the tech market or um, get a new job uh, using JavaScript, something like that. So basically our, our five metrics we measure are tenacity, accuracy, speed, and focus. So tenacity is basically um, do you persevere? Do you keep going? You know, when things get tough, do you, do you answer every question? You know, maybe you skip it, but you come back to it, things like that. Accuracy is how many times once you submit, maybe you got that red answer. Um, so that would reduce your accuracy every time you get a red answer on the left. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously you get good marks for getting a question correct. Um, but your accuracy will go down the number of attempts that you uh, need to complete that. Speed is fairly self-explanatory. How long it took you to answer the questions. Focus, did you go to Google um, and leave the page to look up answers or, or just get some ideas, following the hint links. And elegance, obviously, we spoke about earlier. Make sure you write that elegant code. So we've looked at async await today. Um, looks a lot more elegant, <laughs> you could say, than, than some of the older methods. But elegance is more pulling up on things like your semicolons, um, your indentation, making your code readable, all things like that. Um, yeah, go on. You yeah, want to add some more time? Yeah, uh, just to wrap this up. So apart from the training here, we do coding challenges. So just to give you an overview. So for instance, uh, this is the last coding challenge we play, right? So coding challenge means you do the same JavaScript test all together at the same time, right? After running the challenge, essentially, we compare the results, right? 
So we, we saw since the result, right? So he, he finished last uh, from the bottom, right? Different scores. We analyzed where everybody failed, right? Uh, you know, all, all the sort of things, right? And apart from that, uh, we also, as part of the bootcamp, we analyzed the code, right? So you can see for each question, who was right, who was wrong, different coding styles, different strategies, you know, look at, for instance, this guy, right? He wrote a massive, massive solution, but eventually he found the answer, right? So these are the type of things that we do on the on the bootcamp. Over, we got about 400 developers on it already. We opened it on the 1st of November. And then you can see that eventually you go on the ranks. I know some of you are here already, right? So this is free to use, so feel free to sign up and start doing training. This tool that we have created internally as part of COVID is one of the reasons why our students get a job after the bootcamp, right? Because we can deterministically show how good everybody is, right? We've got very senior people. We've got even Google employees in here, right? So, yeah, if anyone is interested to call professionally, just FYI, we've got one place left on the uh, full-time plan and one place left on the online plan on the next spring bootcamp that we run on April and May. So if anyone wants to join us and start working as a developer, making a lot of money, working remotely and all these sort of things on the website, you get a link, book your place. So simply please enter your details and we'll come back to you as soon as possible. Apart from that, anything else, Greg? No, just uh, thank you, and I hope you found that useful, and it's given you a good overview to, to what we offer here, and there's plenty of exercises there that you can go away and, and do um, in your own time on, on our training platform, and just check out the YouTube channel, and just thanks for coming, stay around, grab yeah. a drink, we'll play some stay, table tennis. We'll stay here for a while, if anyone wants to play table tennis, ping pong, Tomorrow we explain, we'll explain the details of the bootcamp if anyone is interested to see how do we work, why people get a job after the course and all these things, right? And next week, the last meetups of the season because in March we'll be fully focused on helping people to get a job, yeah? Apart from that, we'll present the platform in March in Amsterdam internationally and in Google Campus in April. So it was a pleasure to catch up with you today, guys. Looking forward to see you soon. Thank you very much.